Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, let's let's do one more scenario-based question for the ADC Part One exam. I hope you all are doing well, and uh, for the regular candidates who know what I'm doing right now, you know that I'm going to solve a question. For all the new candidates, uh, this is just uh, what do you say? Trailer of how your exam is going to be. And how the questions are asked in the exam. There is one big scenario mentioned, and there are five sub questions on it, and you have to solve it. Uh, it's not a direct MCQ question. You will not have all the questions, which will have just one correct answer, and all the four options would be wrong. You may have questions where all the five answers are correct, and you have to choose the best possible answer for that given scenario. So, read the question well and understand what they are asking. Reading the question is the main key here. You have to analyze, you have to catch the key words, the key phrases, and then keep them in the mind when you're reading the sub-questions. Understood? And also for all the new candidates uh, who want to get in touch with me, uh, you can join the Facebook group Target ADC. And uh, once you answer the questions that I've listed, I will approve your request. I usually approve all the requests on any Sunday. Uh, and yeah, then you can be in direct touch with me through messenger or you can email me or so yeah, like that. Let's, let's start and hope you had a good weekend. So a uh, mandibular right lateral incisor has an apical radial lucency. Okay. That was discovered during a routine examination. See this word discovered is very important because uh, it means that you found it. The patient never complained of it meaning the patient is not having any discomfort or pain. It's asymptomatic. That's, that's the word here. There was a history of trauma more than 10 years ago and the tooth was slightly discolored. Okay, so whenever you tend to see an adult tooth discoloration, it's a high likely possibility that the nerve is either calcified or is necrosed. Otherwise, the tooth usually doesn't get discolored. The adjacent teeth responded normally to pulp testing. So, so the question mentions that the adjacent teeth have responded, but it does not mention that the tooth in question has responded how. So basically nerve testing is not conducted on the tooth where you have discovered uh, apical radial lucency. The patient concern is only about the tooth color and he wants a treatment for that. So <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> the patient uh, has come to you saying that my tooth is discolored and I want it to look nice. That's all. He doesn't know what has happened, why it has discolored. You have taken IOPA and you have discovered a radiolucency. The patient does not complain of pain anyhow. When, when it means that the patient has not complained of pain on any action, it means even on biting there is no pain. So when even on biting there is no pain, uh, there is no point doing a percussion test at the start. The first test that you always have to conduct on such a tooth is to see if the pulp is vital or not. Because that would determine your course of action. But why I am saying this is that, uh, see sometimes the tooth is calcified. And uh, the pulp is still alive. You know, it, the electric pulp test might give you a result. But since there is no symptom, uh, you don't need to do a root canal treatment. You can just mask it with the help of a veneer. But in case the pulp is non-vital, which would be seen on uh, pulp testing, in that scenario, you cannot just do a veneer like that uh, because then it's a wrong kind of treatment because the, there is necrosis and it can give troubles later on. So in that scenario, you will have to do an endo treatment and then you'll have to do something like a walking leech technique uh, uh, or uh, yeah, the walking leech technique basically that the most appropriate or else you can give a veneer after that. So uh, knowing how the status of the pulp is very important in such scenarios. So anyways, uh, the patient comes to you, says, I have a discolored tooth, doctor, what can you do about it? And you see the IOP and you see there is radio lucency. Now you want to determine how to proceed. So let's see what is the first sub-question. Mm 
what investigations will you do to diagnose the tooth condition see heated instrument okay it's not a wrong answer percussion is not the wrong answer either because that test also has to be done but uh, will that be on my priority list in the sequence of testings palpation again i will do that electrical pulp test yes cavity test no there is no point doing a cavity test now out of a b c d my priority would be electrical pulp test then i would go to percussion and then i would do palpation and since i have done electrical pulp testing i will avoid a heated instrument so ultimately it comes down to b c d and i would choose electric pulp test as the answer uh here it's coming percussion as wrong because this is the solved response of one of the candidates so this is how it will appear when you will solve one of my mock tests and uh, if you attempt a wrong answer then it's going to show like this with the correct answer below and then there is a big feedback which comes after it in some questions or a small feedback but any which ways i'm this, these sessions are recorded what i'm doing right now and i'm going to share the youtube link of it so i hope you have understood why i have chosen the electric pulp test like percussion and palpation are not wrong either but in my sequence of testing the electric pulp test would be first because that has not been done and the question mentions that it's not done on the tooth the tooth did not respond to sensibility tests what could be the pulp status now the question itself says that you did the pulp test and it's not responding so whenever the tooth does not respond and there is discoloration and you frankly see on the iop a periapical radiolucency it has to be necrosis there is there is this is a straightforward dental mcq question it cannot be reversible pulpitis symptomatic asymptomatic irreversible pulpitis see if you were confused between uh, symptomatic and asymptomatic irreversible pulpitis pulpitis is inflammation of the pulp that cannot happen especially when you see an abscess below the tooth usually in irreversible pulpitis there is no abscess it can be symptomatic it may be an asymptomatic it's very rarely to encounter a asymptomatic irreversible pulpitis because irreversible pulpitis is always sharp shooting pain but necrosis yeah the tooth would not respond would not pain there will be an abscess sometimes if it's very chronic there will be a sinus tract and still there would be you know no symptoms so for this particular question it's necrosis pulpal diagnosis questions will be asked in your exam it's the bread and butter of dentistry and you need to diagnose it well because your treatment would depend on that please study pulpal diagnosis what treatment to do in which scenario very carefully and sometimes the treatment modalities are different in primary and permanent teeth do not be confused read the questions properly if it's a primary tooth or a permanent tooth understood so again a big uh, explanation is there now what is the periapical status if your examination revealed that there was no tenderness to percussion or palpation in the lesion now they are asking specifically about the periapical status not the <coughs> pulpal status so uh, see there is definitely a pulpal periodontitis that that we have ascertained on the x ray that there is a radiolucent lesion so there is some kind of periodontitis happening so and it's an apical periodontitis so is it symptomatic no there is no pain on percussion or palpation is it acute no it doesn't look like it and uh, anyways acute lesions will cause pain chronic apical periodontitis is not a wrong option okay but usually in chronic periapical periodontitis there is a sinus tract present but again it's not a wrong option but if i have the option of asymptomatic apical periodontitis i'm going to choose that <coughs> because it is asymptomatic because chronic apical periodontitis can show some symptoms it may not show symptoms but because uh, it's it's not showing any symptoms and this option is given i'm going to move towards it you choosing chronic apical periodontitis is not a wrong option either but i'll favor the asymptomatic option more <coughs> so again an explanation is provided read through it 
<coughs> sorry so now they are asking what is the final diagnosis when when they are saying what is the final diagnosis it means both the palpal and the periapical diagnosis so first option palpal necrosis true symptomatic apical periodontitis with condensing osteitis it definitely does not have condensing osteitis guys you need to just pause the video go and search what condensing osteitis is it is mostly a radiopic area which is below a grossly carious tooth usually caries is the one which causes this periapical reaction in the bone which leads to formation of a radiopic structure in the bone that's called as condensing osteitis and the first option says it's symptomatic apical. There is no symptom, so wrong. Second option, symptomatic reversible pulpitis, normal apical tissues. Definitely the apical tissue is not normal. So again, this option goes out of the window. Reversible pulpitis, normal periapical tissue, wrong. Option E, pulpal necrosis, crony apical abscess. See, the thing is, uh, it's not an abscess. Because if there is an abscess, there has to be a swelling. <coughs> And since there is no swelling, I cannot choose abscess. So, pulpal necrosis, asymptomatic apical periodontitis is the right option here, as we have discussed in the above two questions. Honestly speaking, this question is very straightforward. This entire scenario is very straightforward. You should be solving the scenario in less than one and a half minutes. You should not be taking any more time on it. Once you have your concept right. <coughs> what will be the treatment sequence for the two? Okay, treatment sequence. Planning, let's plan. Extraction. Why? Why you want to extract? You can treat this too. Unless the patient asks you for it. No, I'm not going to extract. That would be last option. Surgical endodontic treatment. Okay. Uh, surgical endodontic treatment should be attempted once. A normal endodontic treatment fails. So basically a picosectomy and uh, retrograde fillings should be done once the orthograde filling fails. But when no endodontic treatment has been attempted, why directly jump to the surgical part? Bleaching followed by endo treatment. Uh, nah, it should be the other way around. Endo treatment should be done followed by bleaching and then permanent restoration. You can't bleach the tooth and then do the endo treatment. You have to do the other way around. So yeah, option A is the right answer. So, lateral questions that you should be reading from this is uh, walking bleach technique and what treatment is there for reversible pulpitis, irreversible pulpitis, hyperplastic pulpitis, what is chronic apical abscess, what is acute apical abscess, what is a phoenix abscess, that is acute exacerbation of a chronic apical abscess. All these things you should be reading. Spend 2-3 hours on pulps today. You, you will be happy because it will make you a better dentist to diagnose. And diagnosis is the key, you know. If you diagnose a problem, treatments all of us can do. Diagnosis is the key. So, learn to diagnose. So, I hope this has helped. I hope this has helped to clear some of your concepts if you had any doubts. And let me know um, if you have any other questions, leave in comments. You know, I like to read your comments and I reply to them. Develops a connection between us, right? Otherwise, it's pretty much me talking to my laptop. <laughs> so, have a nice day, guys. Bye-bye.